How did FDR's New Deal try to solve the Great Depression? When Franklin Delano Roosevelt, or FDR, was sworn in as president in 1933, the Great Depression had already been in progress for three years. During his inauguration, he gave one of the most famous speeches of his presidency. Let me assert my firm belief that the only thing we have to fear is fear itself. In his first days in office, FDR was confronted with a banking crisis. In the 1920s, banks had engaged in some risky practices, like loaning money to people to invest in the stock market. Some of these banks went out of business. When they did, thousands of people lost their entire life savings. In 1932, 1,400 banks failed. After that, the slightest rumor that a bank was in trouble would cause a bank run meaning everyone rushed to the bank to withdraw all their money at the same time. Ironically, even if the rumors were false and the bank was okay, a bank run would cause the bank to fail. FDR ordered all banks closed for an emergency banking holiday. He pressed Congress to quickly pass two laws, the Emergency Banking Act, which loaned money to banks, and the FDIC, or Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation. This second law is still in effect today, and it means that if your bank loses your money, the government will pay you back whatever you lost. FDR spoke directly to the American people in the first of many fireside chats delivered over the radio. My friends, I want to talk for a few minutes with the people of the United States about banking. First of all, let me state the simple fact that when you deposit money in a bank, the bank does not put the money into a safe deposit vault. It invests your money in many different forms of credit, in bonds and commercial paper and mortgages and in many other kinds of loans. In other words, the bank puts your money to work to keep the wheels of industry and of agriculture turning round. A comparatively small part of the money that you put into the bank is kept in currency, an amount which in normal times is wholly sufficient to cover the cash needs of the average citizen. What then happened during the last few days of February and the first few days of March? Because of undermined confidence on the part of the public, there was a general rush by a large portion of our population to turn bank deposits into currency or gold. A rush so great that the soundest banks couldn't get enough currency to meet the demand. This bank holiday, while resulting in many cases in great inconvenience, is affording us the opportunity to supply the currency necessary to meet the situation. It is possible that when the banks resume, a very few people who have not recovered from their fear may again begin withdrawals. Let me make it clear to you that the banks will take care of all needs. I can assure you, my friend, that it is safer to keep your money in a reopened bank than it is to keep it under the mattress. The success of our whole national program depends, of course, on the cooperation of the public. With the banking crisis under control, the FDR administration set about solving the other economic problems that made up the Great Depression. There wasn't a single magic solution for all of these problems, so they created many laws and programs that together were known as the New Deal. You'll research some of these programs in more detail later, but for now I'm just going to tell you about two important New Deal programs, the WPA and the Social Security Administration. The WPA was a huge program to create jobs for millions of people. There were over 100,000 different programs within the WPA. No job was too big or too small. All of these people were essentially working for the government, being paid with taxpayer money. Part-time employment is provided in many kitchens where clean, wholesome school lunches are prepared for undernourished children of needy families. In libraries and schools, skilled workers are employed in repairing and rebinding millions of books. In many places where books were hard to find, over 2,000 traveling libraries now supply the demand for knowledge and entertainment. In nursery schools, the children of needy and working mothers are provided with the best of care and medical supervision. Some of the most interesting of the WPA projects in adult education are the classes in which hundreds of thousands of foreign-born people learn the language and customs of their adopted country. 
and in finding suitable work for musicians and other artists, the WPA has contributed greatly to the culture of America. A typical project is this Negro choir singing the spirituals that are the real folk music of America. Drought is a grave national problem, correcting it a mammoth undertaking. As a step in this direction, relief workers are engaged in the construction of many dams to conserve future rainfalls. Construction work on water conservation projects requires an immense number of skilled and unskilled workers, providing immediate employment for hundreds of those who would otherwise be on relief. Those who suffered because of the drought are now employed on projects designed for their own future benefit. Thus, the works program answers the need of both the individual and the community. The WPA also funded construction of the Brooklyn Central Library and the swimming pool in Sunset Park. You would never know it from this video, but people of color worked for the WPA too. In fact, 15% of WPA workers were black. But because the New Deal allowed states to run most WPA programs, southern states discriminated against black people and prevented them from accessing jobs. The Social Security program basically created a mandatory retirement savings program that's still in use today. When you're young and working, you contribute part of every paycheck to Social Security. This is why people have a Social Security number. Then, when you stop working at age 65, you receive a monthly check from the government. The Social Security program also created unemployment insurance, meaning if you get fired from your job, the government will give you money until you can find work. But like the WPA, Social Security was biased against people of color. You could only get Social Security if you got paid with a paycheck, which excluded sharecroppers and people who got paid in cash off the books, like domestic servants, nannies, and cooks. In the 1930s, these jobs were disproportionately done by people of color. Some of you have asked me if we're headed toward a second Great Depression. I hope we're not. I think we've learned enough from the last Great Depression to prevent that from happening. But it's almost certain that we're already in a recession, which is like a mini depression. COVID-19 has already caused over 3 million Americans to lose their jobs, and that number is gonna keep growing. So let's talk about the pros and cons of the $2 trillion relief package that Congress passed last week. The money is CPR for a critically ill economy. Americans want to know how soon they'll see that relief. They need this money like as fast as possible. Florida Republican Marco Rubio co-authored the small business section of the bill. More than $350 billion in loans and grants designed to prevent more layoffs. So a small business can get the money in a week? Well, in some cases with the express loans, 36 hours. The bill's big boost in unemployment insurance should go into effect by next week. Unemployment insurance has been expanded to include new types of workers, including part-time workers and gig workers like Uber or Lyft drivers. Another change is that you don't have to be fired to receive unemployment. It also covers people who have to stop working for a reason related to coronavirus. As for those cash payments, $1,200 for most individuals, double for couples, and $500 more for each child, the Treasury Secretary says the IRS should be able to direct deposit the funds in most bank accounts within three weeks. One alert tonight about those cash payments. Americans whose bank account information is not on file with the IRS could find themselves waiting up to four months for the money because the IRS, Nora, can only mail out about 20 million papers checks a month. This relief check will go out automatically to people who filed taxes in 2019 or 2018. If your parents still need to file taxes for 2019, they can go to apps.irs.gov slash app slash free file to find a list of government approved websites that will help you do your taxes for free. Then sign up for direct deposit to get your check faster. Here's the really bad news about this relief bill. Just like the New Deal, it doesn't help all Americans equally. As lawmakers debate more coronavirus aid for American workers, immigrant advocates worry about the fate of millions of undocumented workers. Even though they disproportionately work in some of the hardest hit industries, they are by law ineligible for most federal benefits. Martina Sanchez Rodriguez moved to Chicago from Mexico nearly 20 years ago to seek a better life for her children. She's been undocumented ever since. 
She provides for her household by looking after an elderly woman. Two days after Newsy interviewed Sanchez Rodriguez, her employer told her to stop coming to work until the coronavirus crisis gets better. If you want to do something about this, go to thepeoplesbailout.org and contact your representative in Congress. Tell them you want the next relief bill to include undocumented workers and their kids. That's it for my video. Make sure you complete the quiz questions on Schoology and the exit ticket in the discussion. The second part of the exit ticket requires you to ask a question, which is really important, so don't skip that part. If you have an additional question about the 2020 relief bill that you'd like to ask me privately, send me a Schoology message.